And we're back in my office. So you want to be an HVAC technician, huh? Here's the top 10 things you need to know before you get into it. So here we go. So one of the things that uh, you know you might not be aware of is when you're getting started in this, you're gonna have to buy tools. Uh, you're gonna have to buy a lot of tools, especially when you're getting started because uh, you need tools to do your job. A lot of companies aren't gonna provide you with the basic hand tools, so you are gonna be um, required to provide your own basic hand tools. So pretty much anything that fits in the uh, tool bag, that's what you're providing. As far as like the bigger stuff, like vacuum pumps, recovery machines, the specialty stuff, uh, most companies will provide you with that stuff. Um, one of the companies I worked for, not this one, but they didn't provide me with anything. So that's why I have everything, is because I was required to buy everything. Um, so I paid for all my vacuum pumps and my torches and stuff. The company I work for now, they actually give you a lot of tools, so uh, it's kind of nice. So some of my tools have actually been sitting in the garage for the last year and a half. So um, anyway, uh, so tools are very important. Uh, reason being is they define you as a technician. If you don't have certain tools, sometimes it might take a certain type of job longer. Uh, but if you have a specialty tool, it might cut that time in half. So it's going to make you a little bit better. Like I said, it does define you as a technician because the type of tools you have open up other possibilities um, as far as what type of jobs you can do, uh, how fast you can do it, and things to that nature. So, uh, you know, don't fret on that. It's investment in yourself. You're investing in yourself, which you've probably already done. If you went to school, you're investing in yourself there. Uh, but tools are very important. And another thing is it's a constant. So just because you buy all your tools up front, you, you don't, don't expect to never have to buy a tool again because they do wear out. Um, I like to get a little bit nicer stuff just because it just lasts longer. It's got more functionality, makes my job easier. Um, but they do wear out and they do need to be replaced. And then if you're like me, you like to have the latest and greatest. So sometimes you wanna just upgrade because they came out with something cooler. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, as a HVAC technician, you're constantly buying tools. Uh, they do wear out and sometimes you will lose them. Uh, you might drop in an attic and then somebody else you know, goes there after you and then they came up on a new driver. <laughs> so um, you know, that's what I like to call donating to the attic because uh, I've come up on a few things uh, that I use today. Uh, but uh, keep that in mind, uh, tools, very important uh, and a constant. So don't expect to be given all your tools up front for free. Uh, you will have to work for them. So you have to decide on what path you wanna take to get into the industry. Pretty much there's two options. Um, you can either you know, get a job as an apprentice and learn in the field where you ride along with an experienced technician and they teach you that way. Uh, or you can go to a trade school or a college um, and you know, learn the trade that way as well. Uh, what I did was when I first started, I actually started off as an apprentice. I worked for a one-man band type of company and uh, I rode along with him as his helper and I learned a lot. Uh, then after I stopped working for him, I decided I wanted to go to school. So I actually found a college that had a really good program and I went ahead and enrolled in that program. Um, and it was a very good program. It took about two years though. I do know that there's some trade schools that do it in like two months. Uh, personally, I think that's a little short because it's a lot. There's a lot of information you need to learn. Um, but you know, again, sometimes you're trying to you know, get through school as fast as possible and get a job. Uh, I, at one point I ended up working as an installer while I was going to school uh, just to pay the bills. Um, so you want to consider what's going to work out best for you. Uh, personally, I think both uh, options is a really good way to go if you can. Um, I was able to be an apprentice, so I learned a little bit on the field, but then I went to school and learned all the theory. So when you get a situation where um, you have a problem that's really difficult to figure out or it's kind of weird, um, falling back on all the theory uh, definitely helps you figure out those those tough ones. So, you know, whatever works for you, I'm not saying one's better than the other, um, but uh, each one does have its pros and cons. So if you can, there's nothing wrong with doing both because then you get the best out of both worlds. So when you're getting into this, you're gonna wanna figure out, you know, what kind of tech do you wanna be? Do you wanna get into install? So that's where you actually install the units. Or do you wanna become a technician and that's where you maintain and repair the units? Another thing you want to consider is what type of company you want to work for. Do you want to work for a commercial company? And that's where you're primarily, you know, working on bigger units. You're just pretty much just doing PMs and repairs. Uh, or do you want to be a, work for a sales company, which is generally going to be a residential company? Um, and that's going to be basically you're going to be required to sell and upsell. 
So it's more of merchandising than it is actually HVAC. Um, so, however, there are uh, places, if you're very technical, if you're a good technician, um, you can work for a sales company and not have to sell. Uh, typically, they will keep on staff some actual techs and they can actually fix things. Uh, and they're typically going to be called warranty techs. Uh, that's pretty much what I did um, for a lot, of my, uh, a lot of my career. Uh, warranty tech is pretty good because you can work for a company and every now and then if you do sell something you get a little commission on top of your, your hourly pay. Uh, but mainly you're not required to sell anything so you don't have to worry about you know metrics and things like that so uh, but yeah you want to decide if you want to be um, a technician an installer or if you want to go residential commercial sales or just repairs all right so you just graduated your school you got your certificate and you're starting to apply for jobs uh, but then you're noticing that the starting pay isn't that much um, that's to be expected one of the things is a lot of people will go to school and they expect to be making all kinds of money. I was one of them. Uh, but when you first start off, you don't make much. You know, it's it's a, it's it's more than minimum wage for sure. Uh, but uh, you got to earn it. You got to earn your stripes. So even though you went to school, you don't really know much, and you got to earn that field experience uh, because you have to keep this in mind: is that company that's hiring you is taking a risk because there's a lot of people who go to school who just can't cut it. Um, being an HVAC technician is not for everyone and um, so it's kind of like a trial run so they don't want to pay you all the money they can until you prove yourself so you do have to earn your stripes so keep that in mind but if you work for a good company and they take care of you and you take care of them they're definitely gonna bump up your pay you know and then you also get other perks too as well so don't worry about that when you first get your first job it's not gonna pay the best but you will make more eventually just Work hard, ask questions, learn as much as you can, and become a, tech, a good tech, and you know the money will come. So another thing to be prepared for is long hours. Uh, we're talking overtime, we're talking on call. So overtime is basically you're going to be working past five. If your schedule's eight to five, realistically, you're probably going to be working like eight to ten. You know, depending on where you're living. I mean, different uh, areas have different uh, needs and different services, so it just kind of depends. Also, kind of depends on uh, you know what part of HVAC you're doing. Are you doing residential? Are you doing commercial? Are you doing uh, refrigeration? Um, but what ends up happening is you're going to work a lot of long hours, and then on top of that, you know, if you're on call, that's basically 24/7. So uh, usually it's emergency service. So if somebody calls you at like 10 o'clock at night. Or one o'clock in the morning you have to be available usually it's on a rotating schedule so you don't do it all you know non-stop um, but what happens is nobody wants to do it so somebody might tell you hey I'll give you 200 bucks if you do it for me so the next thing you know you're doing it for everybody because if you become that guy everyone's gonna ask you sure you're gonna have a pocket full of money but you're gonna burn yourself out so that was me at one point <laughs> so that's actually how I bought a lot of my tools um, so you want to consider that but keep in mind when you're working all these crazy hours that's taking time away from you it's taking time away from your family so if you're a family man you have children uh, you have a wife a girlfriend or whatever uh, they're probably not gonna see you so uh, be prepared to be missing birthdays uh, anniversaries um, you know stuff like that um, personally I've missed a lot of my wife's birthdays I've missed anniversaries I've missed a lot um, I, now that's why one of the reasons why I moved to Bend is just I couldn't you know deal with all the hours anymore uh, because I had no life my entire life was HVAC so uh, one thing I like to tell new techs is HVAC isn't a job um, it's not only a career but it's a lifestyle so keep that in mind especially when you're first getting into this um, you're gonna be expected to work a lot you're gonna have a fat wallet but you're not gonna have time to yourself it does change. There are companies that are a little bit more lenient. The company I work for currently, uh, I pretty much work, you know, uh, eight to five, and uh, I do. We do have an on-call schedule, but um, pretty much I do it like maybe once every. Uh, I think it's once every four or five weeks, uh, which is pretty pretty good. And we don't get too many calls, but I'm doing mostly commercial. Um, so the only calls we really get are like some residentials. Um, or some refrigeration stuff but for the most part nobody wants to pay double time so um, but keep that in mind so remember when you're getting into this uh, don't expect to be working a nine-to-five job or an eight-to-five 
uh, because realistically that's not going to happen. They might tell you, oh yeah, you're going to work Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, but uh, no, it's going to be more like uh, when it's about 4.50, someone's going to call you, hey, can you run two more calls? Can you run three more calls? Uh, so expect that. Um, it's very rewarding, but you know you are or you do have to make a compromise and give up some of your personal time. All right, so another thing you want to be prepared for is seasonal budgeting. So depending on your, your local climate, um, you're going to have different seasons where it's super busy and then it's going to be slow. So what will happen is, you know, during your busy season, you'll be working a ton of overtime uh, and you'll be making a lot of money. Uh, but then what happens, you hit your slow time and then, you know, you're back to working 40 hours a week. So you want to make sure that that little bit extra money you're making during the summer or during your busy season, uh, you set some aside. That way, when it's slow, you still have a little bit of extra savings saved up. Um, because that can really mess you up. Uh, I've had a couple of coworkers where they were, you know, they started in the summer in California and they're just like working a bunch of overtime and they got dependent on that. And then winter hit and they were down to working, you know, full time again. Um, in smaller companies, sometimes you don't even work 40 hours a week. So um, whenever you're getting that crazy overtime, you want to go ahead and save a little bit of money. That way you're covered uh, during the slower time. So another thing to be prepared for is to deal with customers. Whether it be in residential or commercial, you're still dealing with homeowners, you're dealing with property managers, um, more so on the residential side than, than commercial, but you're still dealing with customer service. So you wanna have that high level of customer service, uh, whether it's dealing with you know, pricing out repairs or bidding out repairs, um, dealing with warranties or even customer concerns. Uh, you need to be prepared for that and be able to handle that in a professional manner. All right, so you finished school, you got your job, now you're done, you don't have to learn anymore. Well, you're wrong. Uh, in this industry, you're gonna have to constantly be learning because new equipment comes out all the time, new technologies, new controls, and sometimes you've come across units you've never worked on. So it's, it's just like a constant uh, learning experience. You have to always be learning. That's one of the things I like about it so much is no matter how long I've been doing this, I'm constantly seeing stuff that I've never seen before and I'm constantly having to learn how to work on these things. Like this stuff here. A little over a year ago, I, I never touched stuff like this, and now I'm working on it every day. And so I had to learn how to use it, because uh, you know, when you're going from residential to something like this, uh, it, is, uh, you know, it is a little overwhelming at first, uh, but when it comes down to it, it's all basics. So, you know, learn how to read your schematics, and you'll be able to figure it out, because it all pretty much works the same, it's just got a lot more controls a lot more safety so um, you just got to constantly be learning always ask questions doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. you could be doing this for 40 years you still might come across something that you've never seen before um, or have no idea how to work on and you have to figure it out the thing that you're gonna have to expect is you're gonna be working in, in harsh environments whether it be under a house in an attic in a mechanical room um, you know in a hoarder's house uh, so you know these are things that you're gonna have to do uh, in Southern California, you know, an attic during the summer can get up to 170 degrees, you know, and you're expected to go up there because pretty much every single air handler or furnace is always in the attic, you know, and that's where the filter is, that's where the blower is, and so on. So, you know, you're going to be expected to go up there. Um, you know, want to make sure you drink lots of water and that, uh, you know, you don't die up there, <laughs> but you are going to be expected to go into an attic. So if you're not good with being, you know, in a small confined space with a bunch of fiberglass and and uh, having to step on uh, wood beams to not fall through the ceiling, uh, you probably don't want to be doing this. Um, you're going to have to crawl under the house and then sometimes there's rat droppings and it's just nasty and gross, but it's just one of those things you have to deal with. Um, so you're definitely going to have to work in harsh environments, so be prepared for that. Uh, you're going to definitely have to get your hands dirty. This job is very solitary, uh, kind of depending on whether you're doing commercial or, or residential. I mean, residential, you're talking to the clients for most of the time, uh, but commercial, usually you're just by yourself, you're in your truck, you're driving everywhere by yourself. Uh, so it is a very solitary type of job. Um, another thing too is, you know, a lot, the nice thing about this is you're not always micromanaged, depending on the company, of course, some companies try to, but for the most part, uh, you're just kind of left to your own thing. You're kind of like managing your own little company in your truck. 
Uh, you're responsible for you know sending invoices to your clients and collecting payments, dealing with customer concerns, um, and then also you know managing your truck stock. So you have to make sure that when you use a part off your truck that it gets restocked. Uh, so that's another thing that you're going to be expected to do. So you want to be able to have good uh, you know personal management uh, times. Uh, time management skills because you need to make sure that everything gets done because there's not going to be somebody um, hovering over you to make sure you do what you need to get done so keep that in mind if you're a very social person i uh, can get lonely at some points but uh you know um for for me personally sometimes i like to be uh, by myself so it doesn't really bother me especially now that i do commercial um, i don't really talk to anybody for the whole day really unless i get a phone call or something uh, or if I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so just keep that in mind. You will be by yourself a lot. So that was the top 10 things to expect when becoming an HVAC technician. I know it can be overwhelming, especially when you don't know what you're getting into. So hopefully this video helps you. Some of the stuff seemed kind of negative, but don't worry, it's really not that bad. It's totally worth it. Uh, every day I go to work, I totally enjoy my job and other technicians would agree with me because being an HVAC technician is very rewarding. Uh, so hopefully this really helped you out. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.